This is CNN. Preparing for a president. In moments from now, President Clinton will touch down in China and we'll have a live report. Also, is the proposed merger between AT&T and TCI a good deal or is it a dud for consumers? We'll have some answers in a bit. And Ken Starr is getting a new address. We'll tell you why and what it means. Live from the CNN Center in Atlanta, it is Thursday, June 25th, and this is CNN's Early Edition. And welcome, and good morning to you. I'm Bill Hemmer, and today for the vacationing, Leon Harris. Good morning. We're glad you could join us. I'm Donna Kelly. Relations between the United States and China take center stage this morning. President Clinton is due to arrive in the ancient capital of Xi'an, China, in about 20 minutes. The president and his party stopped in Alaska at Elmendorf Air Force Base yesterday to refuel Air Force One. He gave a crowd of service members and their spouses an overview of why he's headed to China. When dealing with our differences, also, I believe, dealing face to face is the best way to advance our ideals and our values. Over time, the more we bring China into the world, the more the world will bring freedom to China. When it comes to t human rights, we should deal respectfully but directly with the Chinese. That's more effective than trying to push them in a corner. I will press ahead on human rights in China with one goal in mind, and only one, making a difference. The president will spend nine days and visit five cities during this trip. As far as Congress is concerned, there are two or more faces to China, and this makes for an interesting mix of politics, as CNN's Candy Crowley reports. There are a couple of ways to look at China. There is this one, China, violator of human rights. Bill Clinton will travel to communist China. There he'll offer slick words of appeasement to the world's worst persecutor of people of faith, to the world's worst proliferator of nuclear weapons, and to the worst perpetrator of weapons of mass destruction, and to our worst trading partner. And then there's this one, China the one with 1.3 billion consumers. Bottom line, China is moving in the direction we want it to move in. There are more human rights today. There's more religious openness. There's, uh, there's, there's more economic openness, which will lead to more political openness. Always prickly, the U.S.-China relationship has rubbed raw on Capitol Hill. A House committee continues to probe allegations the Chinese tried to buy their way into U.S. politics. Another House committee and four Senate panels are probing whether U.S. satellite business with China gave China access to sensitive nuclear technology. Oh, and it's an election year. Coming in July, the annual fight over whether China should continue to enjoy most favored nation trading status. Critics underline China's export of nuclear technology to Pakistan and other nations. The huge gap between what China imports to the U.S. and what it allows the U.S. to import to China. And human rights violations from Beijing to Tibet. Senate, even, Opponents even are a strange alliance that defy party trade, lines. Senator Paul Wellstone is a liberal from Minnesota. What? This is really a, a good example of, of, of the commercial <laughs> calculus and, and uh, tie. Live picture now from Jian, China. That's Air Force One landing carrying the U.S. President Bill Clinton. Arriving now for his 10-day, nine-day visit rather in China. First in Jian, then on to Beijing, Shanghai, and Guilin. And concluding his trip in Hong Kong the first week of July next week. We'll go live to China throughout the morning here on CNN. Stay tuned when the President disembarks from the plane. We'll pick it up there then. Donna? It's about 13 minutes after the hour. You may be excited about what the proposed merger is along, and he's keeping track of what's going on. Wolf? Hi, Donna. The president uh, and the first lady and the delegation are going to be spending most of their time here in Xi'an uh, doing some sightseeing. And we see Madeleine Albright, the Secretary of State, and Bob Rubin uh, walking down with Commerce Secretary Bill Daly. 
Uh, and he's also joined by a, a, a small congressional delegation, Senator Max Baucus, we just see walking down, a few other members of the House of Representatives and some White House officials. No uh, business delegation, which normally would have been the case, but there's a lot of controversy, as you know, back in the United States on some of the business deals with China. And as a result, there's no formal business delegation that joined the president on this tour. There we see Senator Jay Rockefeller walking down, going through the receiving line among those uh, welcoming everyone as the U.S. ambassador here in China, Jim Sasser, who's a former U.S. senator, of course, from Tennessee. Once uh, this uh, little uh, receiving line uh, here at the airport in Xi'an is concluded, uh, everyone will be going to a formal arrival, ce uh, arrival ceremony here in the ancient city of Xi'an, and that's where the president will be delivering some brief remarks, setting the stage for his visit here to China. Don't expect any controversial remarks here. The meat and potatoes, the, uh, the most important part of the trip, will occur once he uh, arrives Friday night, uh, Saturday morning here in, uh, in Beijing, and he has a brief arrival ceremony uh, near uh, Tiananmen Square, very controversial arrival ceremony, the president being the first U.S. president since the 1989 student uprising at Tiananmen Square to visit China. And he's got a lot of uh, issues on the agenda, trying to balance uh, U.S. support for human rights in China with a continuing need to uh, maintain strong economic and political relations with this largest nation in the world. 1.2 billion people will be hearing a lot from President Clinton about the importance of China to, to the United States in terms of strategic concerns, economic concerns, political concerns, and of course cultural and human rights activities. So there will be a lot of activity. Everyone's still waiting for the president and the first lady and daughter Chelsea, who's joined them to walk down the red carpeted stairs here in Xi'an, go through a brief uh, receiving line, and then head over to the formal arrival ceremony. Donna? Yeah, the formal arrival ceremony will be hundreds of dancers. They'll be in their uh, traditional Chinese robes and be performing. It, 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 will, it, it will be very colorful, uh, very, uh, very dramatic. Uh, those of us who flew over on the White House uh, press charter we arrived last night we had a chance today to go tour xian and see see some of the ancient artifacts especially the terracotta warriors tell us a little bit about that wolf about the warriors i was reading a little bit more about that is it is it 700 or 7,000 clay soldiers and horses that are life-size there were some 7,000, but they, they, they're still in the process. It's only been 20 years since they discovered this archaeological treasure here in Xi'an. Uh, 2,000 years ago, 2,000 plus years ago, uh, they, uh, they built these terracotta warriors and horses and chariots uh, to, to, uh, to honor the emperor at that time. And about 20 years ago, some farmers were digging a well, and they happened to come upon this incredible archaeological find, and they've spent 20 years, thousands of archaeologists, students, workers, putting it together, and uh, it's one of the most magnificent uh, sites you could see, and the president will, uh, and his delegation, his party, will be seeing it tomorrow. Those of us in the press corps who've been here for a day already, we had a chance to see it today, and, and I gotta tell you, it's pretty amazing to see, uh, to see what it was like some 2,000 years ago here in China, the, the, uh, the history behind all of that. Uh, it was just amazing. I'm glad I had a chance to do it. Yeah, we do have some pictures of that. Well, so there we go. That We were trying to get those. Uh, here's some of what you saw. The Terracotta Warriors, 7,000 there used to be, and then they were life-sized to protect the tomb of China's first emperor, uh, Qin, and they buried them with him to protect him in the afterlife some 2,200 years ago. And as you pointed out, it was 1974. Those farmers were out digging a well when they found them. It, it, it does look like it's a fabulous archaeological site. And, and, and no one knows if there's a lot more. There could be you know, many more sites just like this buried near, uh, near Xi'an uh, that we just don't know about. They're looking uh, all, over the, uh, all over the area for more of these archaeological treasures, and, and there might be some, but this is something they stumbled upon, they found it, and they've done a pretty good job putting it all together, rebuilding a lot of those terracotta warriors that were smashed and destroyed uh, under 2,000, uh, 2000 years of dust and rubble and dirt and everything else. And I'm sure once uh, the president has his tour of this site tomorrow, it'll be one of the more memorable things he's seen as president of the United States. Yeah, Xi'an, the ancient capital for over a thousand years, the city has about three million people. We hear that there's a pretty heavy police presence and that they've already detained a dissident there. What can you tell us about that? Well, you know, you, you can hear about that, and uh, we've heard from Amnesty International and other groups that they have dis 
they have already detained uh, one or two dissidents, and presumably others will be detained in, in Beijing. But in, in the brief period that I've been here, I, I have not seen a heavy police presence. It's not very visible to those of us, those of us who did some sightseeing, walked around. Uh, sure, there are police. This is a big city. But uh, it did not seem like a very oppressive kind of police presence they, where everybody was on their best behavior because the President of the United States is opening up his visit here in China with this visit to, to uh, Xi'an, which is the ancient capital. The theme being, this is the first of five stops for the President uh, in, uh, in China. There's uh, Ambassador Jim Sasser walking down the stairs, the U.S. Ambassador to China. And presumably there's President Clinton. Yes, he is with the, the light tie waiting to walk out uh, with the First Lady and I believe Daughter Chelsea, there's the President. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there's uh, the First Lady and Daughter Chelsea, who's on the, on the flight, is not walking down with them, obviously. Mm -hmm. The President has said that it is better to engage China. Uh, critics have talked about uh, human rights abuses, but he's been saying that it's better to engage China. Some of his remarks on the way over to China saying engagement with China was more effective than trying to push them into a corner. He also said that he would say what he has to say about human rights. And uh, he will speak out on human rights. He, he will argue that China cannot reach its, fulfill, fulfill its, all of its achievements without a com complete commitment to democracy, freedom, and human rights. The same theme he, he delivered when he met with President Jiang Zemin in Washington late last year during President uh, Jiang's visit state visit to the United States. This is the reciprocal visit. It was originally scheduled to, be, to take place in the fall, but both sides agreed to move it up in order to uh, try to get down to some of the business, uh, the, the important business of U.S.-Chinese relations. A lot of that business, though, has been, uh, has been overshadowed to a certain degree by some of the controversy that has occurred over these past few weeks, allegations that China stole U.S. satellite technology to help its missile, uh, missile capabilities allegations that China has been funneling campaign money into the Democratic Party, uh, allegations that China was involved in selling nuclear uh, capabilities to Pakistan. All of these are very much on the agenda here, and the President will be raising these issues. But at the same time, there are other issues that, uh, uh, that he will have to balance, especially one of the most important, encouraging the Chinese not to go ahead and devalue their currency uh, in, the, uh, in the wake of the Asian financial crisis that's like so many of the countries in this part of the world, with the Japanese yen uh, plummeting in, in terms of its value, there's enormous pressure on the Chinese to devalue, so their exports can be uh, can be very competitive. If the J Chinese were though to devalue, that would presumably uh, spark other devaluations throughout Asia, and there's great fear that I think that could cause a recession uh, that could have a dramatic impact on the U.S. economy as well, which has largely been. Uh, uh, saved from the uh, worst aspects of the Asian economic uh, problems that mm -hmm. we've all seen over these past several months. That will be high on the agenda. Don't expect President Clinton though, to get uh, to agree to allow China to join the World Trade Organization at this point, uh, something China badly wants, but Chinese market U.S. trade officials say still remains rather close to American and other international imports, uh, China's trade. Uh, surplus is huge uh, compared to you know, the situation with the United States and the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, it doesn't look like China is going to get uh, approval to join the World Trade Organization during this state visit by President Clinton to China. Yeah, that trade One surplus. thing, Donna, he would very much like to achieve, President Clinton, is an agreement with China to detarget nuclear missiles, and that's still still a possibility. China has some 13 intercontinental ballistic missiles uh, aimed at the United States, at cities in the United States. And what the U.S. is hoping to do is to reach an agreement with the Chinese, similar to the agreement the United States achieved in 1994 with Russia, to detarget uh, the cities in each, in each other's countries. So if there were an accidental launch, the missile would land in the ocean rather than land in, in a city. Uh, they, they could, of course, reprogram, retarget those missiles very quickly. So there is a symbolic element of this, but there's also a, a substantive element in case of an accidental launch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talking about trade again, Wolf, uh, their main trading partners for China included uh, Hong Kong, United States, and Japan. Their trade in 1997 was about $325 billion up a little over 12 percent from 1996. And uh, a couple of interesting little facts on the wire this morning. The uh, per capita income for urban residents was about $622, and for rural residents, $252. And the interesting thing also, though, despite what seems to be a very, very 
uh, low per capita income compared, of course, to the United States and the other industrialized nations around the world. The uh, 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 longevity, the life uh, expectancy here in China is close to 70 years old, uh, which is pretty good for a developing a uh, huge country like this. So the medical condi- medical treatment, medical facilities uh, are pretty good compared to uh, so many other third world countries in Africa, elsewhere in Asia. The president and the first lady received some flowers from their hosts here uh, in, uh, in Xi'an. They're gonna be getting into the limousine and going into the motorcade. Uh, to go through the formal arrival ceremony, which should be taking place in about half an hour, 45 minutes. The drive is not very far from the airport to the ancient walled city uh, here in, in Xi'an. Mm-hmm. And also one of the things that the president may do in Xi'an after he gets uh, through the towering south gate, I guess that's about 40 feet tall, he is going to possibly participate in a round table I was seeing on rural life, and they're having a struggle in some sectors of the economy around Xi'an and about 75 percent of the the population lives in rural areas he'll be doing that tomorrow he'll be having the first of a few round tables during this nine-day visit to china meeting with uh with local uh, people in a village near xi'an and he'll be asking them questions doing what uh, president clinton likes to do get involved in a discussion on, on what is life like in, in a small rural area in a small village he'll do that before he goes uh, and does the tour of the terracotta Warriors exhibit uh, in Xi'an, which will be uh, a sightseeing tour. And of course, on Friday night, he flies to Beijing for the uh, formal arrival ceremony Saturday morning uh, at China time, which would correspond to uh, Friday night on the east coast of the United States. There's a 12 hour time difference. Uh, we're 12 hours ahead of you right now. Okay, Wolf Blitzer, our senior White House correspondent there with the president. We thank you very much, and we'll continue uh, to follow the trip, of course, with more of our live coverage here on CNN as the president now heads into Xi'an. We'll take a quick break here, and we want to remind you that continuing live coverage continues here on CNN, coming up in the uh, 8 a.m. Eastern Time Hour, of course, all through the day here on CNN. His arrival statement happens in the 8 a.m. Eastern Time Hour. Back after a quick break. Hope you can stay with us.